Welcome back to Nick Landis Comic Corner Classic Slash Non Classic. This is episode number 1318 and double shot number 1212. I have one Dark Horse trade, one Marvel trade. First up, it is Star Wars Omnibus Quentin Voss Jedi in the Darkness. Yeah, before I talk about the trade itself, like the stuff in here. I have to talk about the conditioning of this trade. This trade is damaged. The spine is broken. And look at this. The pages are falling out. Yeah, this is an old trade. Like, my gosh. Now, aside from that, the conditioning of this book, this book collects a lot of stuff related to Quentin Voss. Now, the story himself might not be necessarily canon anymore, but this guy is canon. Oh, yeah, he is canon. He is definitely canon. Oh, his apprentice, Aya Sequoia. Yep, she's canon too. As for if they were actually Master Apprentice in the current timeline, I don't know. But, yeah, these two characters are canon. Well, probably because they appeared on Star Wars The Clone Wars. That's probably the reason why. Now, this on this book collects a lot of stories featuring Quentin Voss. Like, one story doesn't really feature him. We have Twilight, which is a one-shot. Then we have Star Wars 2326, 41. This is probably from the first Star Wars series. Star Wars Darkness, Star Wars Hi Stark Hyperspace War, the Devron version, and the Rite of Passage. Yeah, this is mostly put basically Quentin Voss. Like, a lot of this stuff is pretty much like just after episode one and just before part of the start of episode two. That's where a lot of this stuff takes place. Mm -hmm. This book says it takes place like between the events of Attack Clones, Revenge of the Sith. Mostly just him doing, basically, like, he's looking for his missing his Padawan. He does find her, except that she's been brainwashed by her uncle, and she is a suffer from amnesia. Though it does take, it takes him, like, a couple stories after this to finally get a chance to basically recover. And he, of course, basically, the, the Jedi were, were basically having the feeling he was going to fall to the dark side. It seemed like he would, and then he basically surrendered himself to, to go through retraining. Which he completed no problem. And then eventually he did free uh, Sequoia, freed her, and she, he went off on his own, do his own thing, and she basically came home. We have the Stark Hyperspace War. This is basically set at a time when he was an apprentice, and also when he first met Aya Sequoia. Where she actually saved him when she was a child. And apparently because she's a Force user, he's like, okay, I'll take you along with me because, well, I think they were looking for a Force user, so... They bring her along home, and later on, she did become his apprentice. Like, I don't know if, if they ever mentioned, like, the reason why she became his apprentice because he trust because she trusts him. That could be the reason why. It's possible. I think that's possibly the reason why. Yes. Now, the book itself has got a few different rares with it. As far as I can tell, it does. Mm hmm Yes. Twilight. This is done by John Ostrander, and now worked by John DeRuce. But yes, the guys behind... Star Wars Legacy. Mm -hmm. Infinity's End. This one's done by... Let's see if I can find him here. Let's see if I can find him here. Infinity's End, that's done by Pat Miles and Roman Bacchis. That's who does the artwork in there. Um, Darkness. That one is done by... Try finding it. it. takes a while to find this stuff. Okay, here we go. The Stark Hyperspace War. That's done by John Ausfender and David Ferrari. Um, I, let's see. Where is that one? Which is Darkness. Who does this one? I know I'm just taking a while to find this stuff. Let's see. Okay, this one's also by John S. Render and John Rima. Denaria version. This is done by... Huh. Well, 
Plus, you're going to love the cover of this book. Basically, it's a clear homage to the original Star Wars poster. Yes, this is done by John Uswinder again and David Ferrari. The last story in here that's printed in this book. Let's see, which is called Rite of Passage, which is actually the last story published in here. Where at the end of this, basically, Ayasakuya is promoted to... She's promoted to Jedi Knight, while Quentin Voss is promoted to Master. Yep. One thing I play about Ayasakuya, she's a lovely woman. Yep. And she's from the same species as Ahsoka Tano. Yep, same species. Yeah, different skin color, but yeah, still same species. Okay, here we go. Ray of Passage. This is done by John Eswinder again. Yep, more great stuff by him. This book is fantastic. Give this book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. I don't like the condition of this one. It's just so old. And it's like falling apart. Next up it is... A book I never thought I'd do another book for this character. This is Nick Fury, Agent of Shield. Now this book does have a continuing issues from the stories of Strange Tales. It does not collect this whole feature for the book. Nope. This collects issues 150 to 168, despite the fact that 135 to 150 is not here, because you kind of basically start in the middle of a story arc in here. Yes. Now all the stories in here, I believe, are yeah, it's mostly by three different writers. You have Stan Lee, Roy Thomas, and Jim Serenko, who's also the co-artist on here. The artwork in here is done by, well, aside from Jim Serenko, Jack Kirby, and John Bushman. And I at least kept reading this. Here's the thing. This book came out 20 years ago, and wow, this book is such a great condition for a 20-year-old book. It's going to be like a new edition. Yeah, no, it's not listed as a new edition, but you got to love... The re like I love one thing I love about this book is the coloring. Yeah, they pretty much restored it. I love the fact they actually took the time and restored it to the classic style of the way it was originally published. Mostly put for this for these issues, it's most Nick Fury taking on Hydra for the first half of these issues, while also running into Baron Wolfgang von Strucker, and he also runs into Yellow Claw. An old villain from the 1950s, which is interesting to say the least. Yep, we also have guest appearances. We also have the first appearance in here of Contessa Valentina Del Arg Del uh, basically the, the 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 woman with the, with the white streaker hair, who is who is Nick Fury's longtime girlfriend. Yeah, she first appearance in here. We also have a the only other supporting character in the book aside from her is Gabe Jones and Dum Dugan. We also have guest appearances by Captain America and the Avengers. Excuse me. This is excellent spy stuff. Really well done. And when I got this yesterday at a comic shop in Dade City, I was surprised to see a 20 year book in great condition. I mean, who would have thought, though, this book came out in 2000 and the pages are not yellow? Yes, a lot of the time when I come across books that are like 20 years old, like, or more than that, the pages are always yellow. These books, no. This is actually a book in great condition. I was shocked to see this. Yes, this is a Jim Strinkle cover. And this comes from the classic Jim Strinkle stories in here. Now, now all the stories written by him start with Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Later on, it's Roy Thomas and then Jim Strinkle. Yep. But this is fantastic. Love it. Pure, classic Nick Fury and classic Marvel. I get this book roughly a 10 out of 10. Yeah. And let me show off something here that's a really cool image. This actually ended one of the stories. Baron Wolfgang von Strucker. Yes, as mentioned here in this two-page spread, that they haven't seen each other in 24 years, which at the time they were going by real-time standards, but yeah, it's really good. Fantastic book. Okay, so... That's it for of you. Stay tuned for my other two reviews coming today. Next one will be Bar to another, another comic corner. That one focused on two Spider-Man trades. One of whom happens to be by a guy who actually, as soon as he finished writing the story, he left the series and Marvel. You'll find what it is when it gets to the comic corner, okay? Just next video. Bye.